A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Make yourselves comfortable in this um, nice auditorium. It has a cozy feel to it. Um, my name is Annelise Beck. I will be your host today during this conference entitled Trains and the Holocaust from a symbol of progress to a genocidal tool. I will be introducing our distinguished guests throughout the day. I will be moderating today's interaction, both panel discussion and Q&A, so be prepared. And I will keep track of time. Very important. Originally, this day was going to be held on the 27th of January this year, International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And of course, I need not remind you of the epidemic that for two years made that very difficult and complicated all of our lives and meetings like these on so many levels. However, an in-depth discussion of the role and perception of trains and tracks from a symbol of progress to a genocidal tool is no less relevant when it's held on any other day. On the contrary, I would argue, even today, both trains and tracks can be a symbol of progress and freedom and a genocidal tool at the same time. Trains running from Kiev, for example, as we speak, for as long as they are able to run, of course, offer Ukrainian women and children an escape from the deadly bombings, while at the same time, the battalions of invasive and warring troops and their weaponry are fast-tracked to the front, largely by rail. And need I remind you of uh, the images of uh, the train station of Kramatorsk that was bombed when throngs of refugees were hoping to be evacuated from there. And even today, the Russians have heightened, or the Russian army has heightened um, its uh, bombing of train tracks. That's today. But still, there's a specificity to the role of trains and tracks in the Holocaust. If only because there's still so much we don't know. The Dutch author Frank, Frank Westerman reminds us that, and I quote, historical insight has an incubation time of several generations. We are at the beginning of the research into the roles of trains during the Holocaust. In his book, The Cosmic Comedy, about humans longing for the ultimate frontier, space, <coughs> cosmos. Frank Westermann finds himself standing in the Westerbork Radio Telescope Park, Radio Sterrewacht in Holland. It's the best place for space gazing, space listening, in fact, because it's so very, very quiet there. But it's not only a place where you should look up, it's a place where you should look down too, because history lies buried there, only visible in very faint tracks and traces. It's the place where more than 100,000 Jews, Roma and Sinti, were put on trains and transported to concentration and death camps. At the Westerbork Memorial Center, right across from telescopes 7, 8, 9, and 10, pointed towards space, 93 crossbeams symbolize the 93 transports leaving from Westerbork. Towards the end, the tracks curl upwards, reaching up to the stars, one could imagine. The link with death now severed, but never ever to be undone anymore. The monument, by the way, is a design by old camp prisoner Rolf Prinz. It's a symbol for the worst and the best man can come up with, for the worst and best ambitions and visions man can think of. And I thought this scene in the Cosmische Komedie is an apt example of what we will be doing here today in today's conference. We will be looking at trains and tracks from all kinds of angles, both historical and scientifically, but also artistically and 
literary. We will also hear about how the perception of the role of trains changed over time. And it fits the larger framework that underpins um, the Europalia, Europalia Trains and Tracks Festival as a whole. It's dedicated to railways and their impact on society and arts in general. A 19th century invention that changed society for better and worse and will continue to do so, no doubt, um, in the future. The Europalia Festival, as you well know, runs until the 15th of May this year. There's still much to be discovered. But this particular <coughs> event is a co-production of Caserna d'Ossin, Auschwitz Foundation and Europalia Arts Festival. Now, let me tell you more about what we'll be doing today. The day is broken up into three teams, themes. We will be talking about departure, as I mentioned, about the changing images of trains, and last but not least, we will be discussing the representation of trains and stations in Holocaust memories.